All right, so let's talk about operons and even more specifically the LAC operon. So the LAC operon is located in prokaryotes only. It's not in eukaryotes. And it's defined as a sequence of DNA with one promoter and multiple genes. If we draw this out, this can be my DNA sequence and I'll have my promoter next to several genes. So here we'll have gene one, gene two, and gene three. And since these genes are located right next to each other, we're gonna call them structural genes because they code for proteins with similar functions. Proteins with similar functions. And so this allows for efficiency in our body because it means that RNA polymerase has to bind to one promoter only in order tra to transcribe all three genes at once. Now, once we transcribe our operon, we're going to get an mRNA sequence that's going to consist of the three genes that we transcribed. And ribosomes are going to attach to each of those genes to the start of each of the genes and are going to translate each gene to produce proteins with similar functions. So we'll have our first protein, we'll have protein number two, and then protein number three. And because this one mRNA codes for multiple proteins, we call it polycystronic. So polycystronic mRNA is going to be defined as mRNA that codes for multiple proteins. And this is different from normal mRNA because typically you'd get one mRNA coding for one protein and another coding for another. So now that we've defined operons and polycystronic mRNA, let's talk about the LAC operon. So the LAC operon is located specifically in prokaryotes and even more specifically in E. coli bacteria. And E. coli bacteria is present in our gut and intestine. And the purpose of the LAC operon is to help us break down lactose. So when you split apart lactose, you're going to get glucose and galactose. And what's special about this is glucose is a great source of energy. It's perfect. Our body can use it in glycolysis to get ATP. Now let's actually draw our LAC operon. So if this is my sequence of DNA, our LAC operon is going to consist of several components. So we'll start off with our PI, P, our LAC I gene, and I'll define these as after I draw it. We'll have our cap site, promoter of our operon, operator, and then our three genes, so LAC C, LAC Y, and LAC A. And the LAC operon actually consists of two genes, so we'll have our regulatory gene, And then we're going to have our actual LAC operon gene. So the regulatory gene is essentially going to help us regulate when the LAC operon gene will be turned on or off. And the components of the regulatory gene are a promoter and then the actual LAC I gene that it's going to transcribe. So when RNA polymerase binds to the promoter, it's going to transcribe the LAC I gene and then produce a 5' to 3' mRNA that's going to code for the repressor protein. And this repressor protein 
will essentially determine when the lac operon is turned on or off. And our protein might look something like this. And then on our lac operon, we have the capsite, which stands for catabolite, activator, protein site. And then we have PO. P stands for promoter, but this is a promoter of the operon gene. We have an operator right next to it. And then we're going to have our three genes, the LAC-C, LAC-Y, and LAC-A genes. Let's now talk about the function of each of these aspects of the DNA sequence. So the catabolite activator protein site is where an activator protein is going to bind. This means that it activates or enhances transcription. So when the cap molecule binds to the cap site, it increases the affinity for RNA polymerase to bind to the promoter. So RNA polymerase is going to bind to our promoter, and it's then going to transcribe the LAC-Z, LAC-Y, and LAC-A genes. We're also going to have the operator where the repressor will bind if it's present. And when the repressor binds, it's going to block the RNA polymerase from transcribing. So if the repressor protein isn't present, our RNA polymerase can transcribe a 5' to 3' mRNA. And this mRNA consists of the three genes, LAC-Z, LAC-Y, and LAC-A. And each of these genes is going to code for a very important protein, and the proteins all have the similar function of essentially breaking down lactose. But more specifically, LAC-Z is going to produce beta-galactosidase, LAC-Y produces galactoside permease, and LAC-A is going to produce transacetylase. And each of these proteins have very important functions. So beta-galactosidase is going to help us break down lactose. Galactoside permease is going to help us bring the lactose into the cell. And transacetylase is also a protein, but there's really not much to know about that. So these are the key components of the lac operon. And in the next video, we're going to be talking about how the presence of certain molecules affects transcription of the lac operon.